Welcome to the perfect place to put a practice podcast by Scott McDonald and DrDemographics.com, the best source of demographic, psychographic, and marketing information for professionals. Hello, this is Scott McDonald, and welcome to the perfect place to put a practice podcast on DrDemographics.com. Now, I'm going to start by apologizing for going fast, but I always want to use your time as wisely as I can so I cram a lot of data in a very short time. Forgive me. Now, on one of the forms I use to help my staff and I make recommendations for where to practice, we ask a series of non-mutually exclusive questions, and this is intended to solicit the thoughts and, and even the feelings of what dentists that we work with really want. Do they want growth? Are they looking for affluence? A particular age group? Do they want to practice in a new development or even in a particular population density? You see, frankly, many dentists who try to answer these questions, well, they don't get the idea that what I'm really trying to figure out is what they want. Now, do you know what you want? We're going to talk about it. Now, this makes them frustrated in many cases. I get that. But you see, they simply don't know what they want to know. Some even turn to me and ask, well, uh, Scott, uh, what should I want? Now, I don't answer that question because it puts the responsibility on me and my staff to tell a professional what will make them happy. Not successful, but happy. And that is just too much to take upon our shoulders. Now, sure, I can tell our clients a great deal about every neighborhood in the United States and why one location should be better than another for very objective reasons. That's what we do. But the truth is, you have to know what you want based upon your experiences and your life situation. If you can do that, we can help. Now, I think this is a good segue into my topic for this episode. The three demographic statistics that uh, will indicate success or tragedy for any office space. Now, for the most part, I'm going to leave off the demographic characteristics that will definitely help you turn to a somewhat more abstract consideration of this information. In short, I want to get inside your head just a little bit and talk about what you probably want to know. Now let me disabuse you of a few dead ends that are often over-examined and focused upon, particularly by those demographic companies who tend to use algorithms and scores to analyze sites for practice. They're nice two-dimensional tools, but they don't have that third dimension. So let me start with some obvious factors that will not help you achieve your goals in practice. The first one is not competition ratios. Now, this is one of those extremely overrated but easy to measure aspects of community that some doctors consider their holy grail. Now, let me explain this one again. There are many dentists who believe that if they can find a location where there are no or very few other competitors, that they have found the ideal place to put a practice. Now, let me tell you something. After more than 30 years of looking at sites, let me be blunt. The site with no competition is usually a bad location. Not every single time, but certainly often enough. Now look, you want to know competition, don't get me wrong. Places with lots of crime, extreme poverty, undesirable or inaccessible locations all fit this circumstance of a perfect place to practice. No competition. Ironically, it is the location that has many competitors that may prove to be the best source of the best production numbers. In other words, there is often a reason why there are many dentists in a particular area or site. Now, can there be too many of them? Absolutely, that is true. But just having other offices in the area is not a reason to reject a site out of hand. Now, here's another one, not property values. Some doctors believe that when a site has lots of wealthy people, it makes for a good location. Well, it's not as though we want to reject the wealthy, that's certainly true, and it is not really an issue that we want to reject 
any income strata at all, isn't it? You want to serve everybody. It is just that we have found that understanding financial statistics, including household income and property values, is more useful than seeking to serve only those with high disposable incomes. Now, another thing is population density. There's a company that advises dentists on locations and practice models through its many seminars that it gives all over the country. They are very entertaining, by the way. They have set up a model for practice that will be an appropriate place to practice based upon very narrow demographic facts. So many of this, so many of that. Now, we're not criticizing their model, which has generally been successful. I'm, I'm going to be honest. But I'm saying that when you look at a statistic like population density, you will tend to have uneven or unpredictable results. They will also have lots of dentists chasing after the same narrow geographic areas. So after one of these seminars, we have all kinds of people going, quick, tell me about that site. Now this one size fits all is not just, uh, it's not really a practical strategy. Now, what are the location characteristics that I think are really going to make or break your success? And I bring these up because in almost every community you can find sites that are reasonably priced to consider that feature these aspects of location. So you ready? Number one, visibility. Now this sounds like a simple term, but it would be best to explain it just a little bit because I think there's some misunderstanding. When I say visibility, I'm not suggesting that it must be situated on the corner of two busy cross streets. Oh, but again, don't get me wrong, it can help to be on a street corner with busy streets. The truth is, this is a metric that has changed over my career. Until the 1970s and in the 1980s, signage in terms of size, in format, content, and placement was severely restricted, and by whom? Dentistry. This goes back to the history of communities developed during World War II. Now, it was called the hypodermic needle theory, also called the magic bullet theory, and has largely been disproven. The idea was that consumers could not objectively evaluate what they saw or heard, especially from professionals. It was as though dentists put them in some kind of trance. The theory of planned behavior is not usually applied to location benefits, but if you understand the theory, it can be, well, a huge benefit, and it will make sense, especially as we look at what motivates current dental consumers. So look this up on Wikipedia. Do you have to be located in a shopping mall? Well, no, not really. But having sufficient visibility through signage certainly helps. And it's a great idea to have personal visibility as well, not just the office. It is one reason that living near your office is a good strategy, even though a lot of you don't like it. You don't want to see your patients at the supermarket. Additionally, being visible via the internet is also a solid strategy. All of these are visibility strategies and are solid predictors of your success. Next, accessibility. At no time in human history has it been more vital to be considered in an easily accessible location. At one time, being located in a place close enough to walk to for an office was necessary. But as private vehicles, even ride sharing, has become ubiquitous, it is not so important. But knowing how to get to the office and having it seem conveniently located, subjectively, however you want to define what convenience means, it's important. In fact, it is increasingly important. That is why lifestyle centers are becoming the most desirable sites for dental practices in the country. Now, I've written a lot about it. I've done podcasts on these lifestyle centers. I don't want to get into what they are specifically. It, it may surprise you but a great website is considered important as an aspect of your accessibility as well, by the way. Not just the proximity of one's home to a place of business or where people spend all day. Hours of operation are also considered aspects of accessibility that should not be ignored. 
Now last, targeted. This factor can be seen a little tricky, but it, if, if well done, it will answer the question, why is this office right for me? Have you noticed how many dental websites look exactly alike? They have the same models. Uh, I'm talking about the people. Now they're laughing and loving and they're all blonde. The words or copy is nearly identical, and many features of practice along with equipment and procedures are nearly the same, aren't they? The problem here is that the office location, the features of the practice, and even the background of the doctor are really not considered. They're not targeted for a specific group of people. They don't say why a particular office would be the solution to their problems. They say things that are, well, what some people desperately uh, want others to not care about at all. Now, listen, a location, an office, a doctor, and even the staff should be related to a specific person, the target audience. Sure, there's a virtue in trying to be all things to all people, but the strategy will almost never move the needle of desire to seek care at a particular location. You see, the idea is to try to convince people to seek care where it's important for them to seek care. This is Scott McDonald. Thanks for uh, watching our little video podcast. Check us out at drdemographics.com. We have lots of free stuff and even occasional promotions. Thanks so much for watching.